happy to have uh, here uh, on stage, firstly, uh, Alistair Ross. He is a global product director with the Economist in Intelligence Unit, which is part of the Economist gro Group, but uh, not the Economist as the magazine, but linked to it. And on the other side, I have Benoit Hervieux. He is head of America Desk of Reporters Without Borders. And uh, the topic we would like to talk about is journalism and the threat uh, from global groups, global companies, uh, which, uh, which was raised, uh, the problem was raised um, actually by Reporter Without Borders uh, in the sense that uh, when you look at uh, threats to journalists, journalists killed, jailed, harassed, whatever, then uh, I learned that a new threat is not coming from governments, from state, from dictatorship, but also from private companies somehow, or from local businessmen, strongmen. Can you explain what's happening on that side? Well, what is happening is that now you have, uh, for example, uh, journalists who are trying to cover the environment problems, you know. Uh, uh, live a, st a strong confrontation, for example, with the mining companies uh, in Central America, also in Peru, also in China, because, you know, for some private companies uh, in Asia are quite strong. And so, of course, is the, co the coverage from the journalist goes against the interest of such a company, of course, you can have also, well, of course, a kind of corruption, trying to corrupt the journalist, but also a physical threat mm. against them. I, is this something that applies uh, to local journalists as well as to international journalists? Correspondent, foreign correspondent, or is this mainly a problem of local journalists in a specific area? Well, I'd, I'd make a couple of points here. One is, uh, first of all, I doubt this is particularly new. I mean, uh, I'm sure uh, occurrences are, are, are spotted and publicized constantly, but my own experience in South America tells me this isn't a new phenomenon. Um, I'd also distinguish, or at least uh, uh, urge you to distinguish between uh, global enterprises, large multinational companies, and local companies. So two are clearly very, very different. They have very different ways of operating. They mm -hmm. uh, operate in very different jurisdictions. I'm sure the problem arises in both cases, but the nature of the problem is different depending on uh, the size and the basis of the company. Um, I would, certainly from my experience from what I've seen, I would think that uh, the, the main threat here is to local journalists, people on the ground, people who can't basically escape from the situation. So the only escape for them is to shut up. Yeah. Uh, for an international journalist, it's slightly different because you can go somewhere else or mm -hmm. your organization can report the news from elsewhere. Mm -hmm. We learned not a new um, phenomenon. Do you agree on that? New phenomenon? I would say yes, because uh, during uh, all the years of the Cold War, you had still, you know, the traditional situation with dictatorships on one side, democracies well, on the other side. Of course, it's more complicated, but you had many, the, the, the violence came often from the state, and now it's different in the globalized world uh, like this. But local journalists, it's true that they are the first concern, you know, by the threat, by the danger, by the physical danger. But you can also find that, you know, from international journalists, for example, I have one, uh, one recent case in Panama with the question of uh, exporting mine uh, and many tension with indigenous people and two Spanish journalists who were covering, you know, the problem were expelled from the country. Mm -hmm. um, what would you say? Is, is this a, an effect of um, globalization in which uh, big companies, multinational companies, become more and more stronger and can determine also the real life in regions in developing countries or emerging countries? Is this something that is linked to globalization as such? I, I, wouldn't, I wouldn't think so. No, I mean, I wouldn't. Uh, you may disagree, but I wouldn't put it in those terms. I think, uh, in general, globalization uh, we have to remember globalization isn't simply a question of major corporations uh, acting in a predatory manner around the world. But the access to markets on a global scale is maybe as well a part of the problem. Well, uh, companies are operating in more and more, and more and more locations, evidently that's true. But it's also true that globalization opens uh, the world of information, for example. It makes it uh, harder to, to get away with things in, in uh, dark corners of the world that nobody's looking at because there aren't any. Everybody's uh, 
looking everywhere. So I'm, I'm, not, I'm not sure that I would make, uh, characterize it as a, a consequence of globalization. Mm. Isn't the fact also that now that people, also local people, have more means to unco unveil things, to internet for instance, going to local reporting, so that they are close to it, that they can report because they have mobile phones, they have internet, are they exposed more to dangers because of that fact? I don't think Yes and no, uh, because you have, of course, I mean, now the, what, is, what is a professional journalist now? In, we're, we're all with the development of internet, on also globalization of the information, you know, the netizens. <laughs> but uh, also, I think that at the same time, you can be more exposed because you are not, you are independent journalists, you are doing your work by yourself. But at the same time, you have also the whole network in the internet that can also protect you in some part. Okay. Benoit Hervieux from Reporters Without Borders and uh, Alistair Ross from uh, the Economist Intelligence Unit. Thank you very much.